Well, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming today. Uh, uh, the couple of speakers I heard were fabulous, and uh, I'm excited. But I want to get you uh, involved a little bit here. So we are going to play my favorite game of opposites, okay? I'm going to flash something on the screen. You all in the room are going to shout back the opposite of that, okay? So here we go. Ready? We're going to start easy. Dave. Sharp group, loud, I like it, beautiful. Hi. Oh. Awesome. Wet. This is an intelligent group. I love it, I love it, I love it. Here we go. Happy. Yes. Beautiful. Love. Please. Good. So far, 100%. Here we go. War. Please. Beautiful. All right, now those were the one-syllable words, so now we're going to take it up a notch and get to uh, multiple-syllable words. Here we go. These darn ear mics don't like my ears. Here we go. All right, are you ready? First word is consistent. A little, little hesitation there. Most people say inconsistent. I'm sorry you're wrong because around this kind of country, the opposite of consistent is the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Says the Packer fan, right? Yeah. All right. So here we go. And that is so true. My heart's been crushed a hundred times. Here we go. Courage. Thank you so much. You sucked right into my plan. Yeah, usually when you say the opposite of courage, people shout out right away. Big letters, they shout out, fear. But you know what? You have to have fear present to act courageously. The opposite of courage is cowardice. See, if you have a situation that you're afraid of to act with courage, you walk through and you walk forward and move forward. To act with cowardice is you move away from what you're afraid of. So what about the word fear? What's the opposite of fear? It got, it got kind of silent. Yeah, it got, it got a little silent. So let's flesh that out a little bit. Somebody showed me this. I really like this uh, right here. Uh, because fear is an expectation. Over here is the negative side where you have fear, anxiety, worry. You're anticipating something happen. I could be fearful of this presentation. I'm fearful I'm going to bomb or people aren't going to like what I'm going to do. That's an expectation. So what's on the other side of that? What's the opposite of fear? Good. Silence. So we're going to flesh we're going to flesh that out here, okay? Y'all know this this uh, story, right? Jesus calms the storm. He's in the boat. Uh, it's wavy. They're out on Lake Cormorant and it's getting crazy. And what's Jesus doing during this scary time? Yeah, of course he's sleeping. He's napping during the storm. He's not too freaked out. And then he gets up, he rebukes the waves, and here is his response. He says, "Hey, men, why are you so afraid?" And then he has the antidote to fear, which is what? I gave you a little hint. Faith. Faith is a positive expectation that God has got your back. God's got you. So why are we so afraid, gentlemen? Why are we so afraid, okay? Oh, here's a fun one, but I am going to need a volunteer in a second. I'm going to show you this. This is so cool. Got to keep. All right, so this is a genuine Victor Rat Trap right there, just to make sure you know this is legit. I'm going to prove it to you, okay, here. I like to flesh things out here. So I'm going to take your average, ordinary, leaded number two pencil, and I'm going to place that on the trap here. If it works correctly, it'll snap it right into. Notice how a pencil is almost the same size as the bones in my pinky, okay? Just so we're for real, okay? So here we go. Ready? Snapped it right into right here. Here we go, right here. Look at this. That is a strong and sturdy trap. Look at that. It, it broke it right into. Now, watch this. Here's what I've done. I've taken another trap exactly the same size. And I have rigged onto it some cash. Okay, I won't tell you it's a 5, a 10, a 20, whatever, okay? But I need a volunteer. And for my volunteer, I promise you this. If you come up here, you're going to look me in the eye, I'm going to say, you're going to trust me, you will be unharmed. So, do I have a volunteer? Thank you. Come on up here. Hustle up. Come on right up. There's a the stairway right there. That's a beautiful thing. Let's hear it for our lovely volunteer. It's awesome. Is it Ken? Yep. This is Ken, right? Yep. All right, Ken, look me in the eye, brother. I promise you, if you reach in here, you take it off, you'll be completely unharmed. Now, the cool thing right now is that Ken has already taken a risk because he has risen above the crowd. Because most of us are fearful. We don't want to stand out. We don't want to look stupid. We don't want to look weird. So he's already taken an emotional risk and pretty soon he's about to take a physical risk because he could, you know, get injured. So, number one, you're acting courageously. You're taking a risk already. Ken, trust when you're me. ready, you got to trust me, brother. I am. Go ahead. You reach in the table. And he 
pops it off, and you open it up, turn to the camera, show them what you got there, hold it up high in the light there, got yourself a brand new crisp $5 bill. Let's hear it for Ken. That was awesome, buddy. Outstanding. Here's the thing about risk that I believe wholeheartedly. You cannot grow, you cannot learn, you cannot expand your world without risk. And when you take a risk, what? There's almost always reward. Not always financially, obviously. In this case, it is. That's yours to keep. Do not try and give that back to you. That's called grace. All the gr it was given. You just accepted the gift, okay? If we're going to grow as men, we've got to be bold. We've got to take risks. So I'm going to ask you, what are you afraid of, guys? Because we're all afraid of something if we're vulnerable, okay? Are you afraid to do what I'm doing up here? Stand in front of the microphone? That's the number one fear in the world, right? This is my fear. I'm afraid of heights for sure. And I, if I'm in a movie and they have one of those scenes where they fly over, I go, whoa, I, I kind of jump back. I got a little fear of fly, flying. I don't like being stuck in a tiny chair in a tiny tube without any control. I don't like that, okay? Is it spiders? Is it snakes? Yeah, got a herd of yes. Is it uh, being in a confined place? Or is it really about this kind of stuff? We heard about intimacy with the wife with our last presenter. For me, I, I am hugely afraid of failure, f f failing in front of you people, in front of my congregation. I don't like to be rejected. Commitment. And aren't we all ultimately afraid of this right here? That's the biggie. Afraid of death, right? That's not good. Oh, I don't need this. I'm already late. Somebody will come. Anybody out there? Do you have a phone? No. Sorry. Somebody! Hello? <sighs> there are two people stuck on an escalator and we need help. Now. Would somebody please do something? Help! 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 <laughs> I don't believe this. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> well, there's nothing else left to do. That's it. Hey, don't worry about it. I'll fix it in a second. <laughs> he said he could fix it. <laughs> All right. All right. That's more like it. God. He says he can fix it. I love that. It's just so awesome. It's, how can you be stuck on an escalator? So guys, what is preventing you from taking your next godly step? So many of us just want God to send us an email or skywrite or uh, a text message that says you should move this direction, you should walk through that door. Sometimes you just got to take a step of faith and get off the darn escalator. You know, uh, I, I love, everybody knows this, the parable of talents, right? Uh, so for the first guy, he gets five talents, right? And what does he do with them? He, 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 he risks it. He works them. He gets those five talents. And then he comes back to the boss and says, look, you gave me five talents, and I used them. I used them for the good of the kingdom. And what does the owner say, the master? He says, good and faithful servant. You've done well with those five talents I gave you, so I'm going to bless you and give you five more. And the second guy gets two talents because apparently he was, had two talents. And what happened to him? He used them. He risked using his talents in the world. And he came back to the boss and said, I, I, you gave me two talents? And the master said, you've been faithful, so I'm going to give you two more. And then there's the last guy. He's kind of the weasel. He got one talent. He comes back, what does he say to his owner? This dang word right here. I was afraid, Lord. 
I was afraid of rejection. I was afraid of failure. I was afraid I wouldn't be liked. I had the what ifs. What if? And so I went and buried it. But I love that picture. That's kind of like a lot of us. We're afraid to use our talent, afraid to take a risk. And so when the church called, when the world called, when my neighbor called, when the ministry called, when the mission trip called, I said, I was afraid. So I went and buried the talent that you gave me because I was just afraid what would happen. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit about me. I'm a, I'm a rock climber. It's one of my 5,000 different hobbies I have. And I've uh, led, uh, I think, six or eight uh, church trips with high schoolers and adults uh, of all ages, guys and gals there over the years. Uh, but I've never gone there just by myself with a friend uh, without having the responsibility. If, you bet, if you're from Minneapolis, St. Paul, that's about the same size and shape as the IDS Tower, the big blue pretty building. And uh, so this time I went with a friend, Rob Zachariasen, and we trained for several months uh, down here at the YMCA, which has a wall about, you know, about this high. And uh, so we went out. Now, just so you think, so you know that rock climbing is just not a big macho man thing. It's not a Raleigh thing. Uh, this Jerry on the right here, he, uh, uh, he climbed uh, the tower with us in 2006. And he, uh, a couple weeks before I went, he took his uh, 14 and 16-year-old daughter. They'd never climbed. They went out and they hired a guide and they climbed it. And, and I want to show you what it looks like. Because right up here, you can see this is Jerry and his three daughters and their two guides. That's, those are those little pegs are the people right there. So it's not about being macho or anything like that. It's about challenge. I got into rock climbing because I was afraid of heights. Because that which you walk away from, if you're afraid of something and you walk away, your world shrinks. I used to not like flying. It terrified me. I don't know why. Just I was anxious. So if you walk away from flying, what? Your world shrinks. If you face your fears with God's help, you walk into it, you grow. Your world expands. You can go visit your kids, your grandparents, whatever. So here's the route we're going to do right here, and it's called El Craco. It's called a 5-8, and here's what it looks like. So I'm the leader right here. I'm going to show you what this looks like right here. I'm leading up here. I'm placing these pieces of protection in, and I'm about to, uh, this is right up here is like the first pitch, the belay ledge. We'll tell you about that. This is what it looks like. I've reached the first belay ledge. It's this little uh, tiny ledge about four or five inches wide. Here's my partner, Rob. I'm going to bring him up with the rope, and he's going to pluck out all those pieces of protection, and uh, we're going to keep going. So here's Rob coming up, my second. And then uh, this is called the rack. This is the protection. I'll show you some of that in a minute. And we're climbing up, and we'll get to the belay ledge, and then he'll give the rack back to me, and then we'll climb the second pitch. And here's the second pitch. This is 160 feet of vertical crack. And I'm putting in protection, socking it in, and, uh, and uh, go up a little higher. And right here, I'm just getting to the top of the 160 feet, and I fell. I'm going to talk about falling and failure in a minute. So here I am bringing Rob up. He's going to come up. We made it. <laughs> we were exhausted, tired at the top, but joyful. It was Rob's first time. Uh, and then we got to come down. Here's Rob sitting on the edge. If you look here, you can see a couple buses and some tourist cars there. And what goes up must come down. So we got four 150 foot rappels to get back down. Okay. I want to show you how it works here. So this is just part of our rack that we carry. But these are called piece of protection. And most of what climbers use these days are these uh, camming devices. There, Th this will fit a crack this wide all the way out to that wide and they come in different sizes and shapes tiny ones big ones we have these little stoppers here my job as the leader is to place those in the crack see i place that expand and then i clip my rope to it see how the rope over here is clipped to it and i keep working my up, way up the crack and get in a series that looks like this and that way if i'm up here and i fall theoretically those will catch me here's what it looks like live so you can see I've got a couple of pieces of protection in there. I'm leading up, putting in another one. Rob's feeding rope in and out. He's got me if I fall. I'm getting ready to make a move. I don't want to tighten you too much. I'm okay, we'll show you one more. So now we're getting up there right near the top where I'm going to take a fall. I'm not going to show you that, okay? You should have the camera off, but just so you get a... That's what it looks like, real vertical stuff here, Okay. It's about a 400-foot drop right there. So right up past here, I'm sitting right there. I took a fall. 
You know what happens when you take a fall and you're anchored to the rock of Jesus? Not much. I fell a few feet, got a little scrape. I had a strong rope. I had a great partner. But no, most of all, you know what I had? My life was anchored in the solid rock of Jesus. Which means you can fall. You can fail. You can make mistakes. Just like our speaker before us, Jason, told us. He made some big mistakes. God redeemed those mistakes. Turned them into something positive. Take a look at this. So I've asked men when I speak to him, what is your life angered to? Is it money? Is it your job? Is it your cute girlfriend? Is it your sports? And what you're anchored to, will that hold you when you fall or fail? You've heard this, this parable, right? The wise and the foolish builders. Anyone who hears these words of mine puts them into practice is like a man. Did you catch this? Here's the word, but puts them into practice. This is the like, like the wise man that anchored his rope into solid rock or built his house on the rock. And the storms of life came and cancers and floods and fires came. And because it had its foundation in the rock, it held firm. But the foolish man, he, he heard the same words, but he didn't put them into practice. And when those same storms and difficulties of life came, there was a fall because he had it anchored in sand. And it was a great fall. Look at this, guys. We have this hope, a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. That's called the rock. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And here's two giant truths I want you to get out of today. When your life is anchored to Jesus Christ, look at this. You're held safely. You can fall either of your own bad choices or the things that life throws at you. God's got your back. He's got your rope. You're anchored. But here's the great truth of it. Look at this. You have ultimate freedom. You can take some risk. You can step off the escalator. You can do the things that you are fearful of. I want to close it with this here. Look at this. This is where most of us live. We get up in the morning, we have our coffee, we go to work, we take a shower, we come home from work, we read the newspaper, watch TV. We get up in the morning, we have some coffee, we eat breakfast, we go to work, we take a shower. And we just live in the same old circle. But the magic happens out here, and I actually think this is the truth of it. I think the truth of it is that God calls us beyond our comfort zones. He calls us to take risks, because that's where life happens. That's where the magic is. Remember the movie Parenthood? Steve, Steve Martin? Listen on this conversation to close our time. Isn't that demented? That a grown man's happiness depends on whether a nine-year-old catches a pop-up? I mean, what if he missed? But he didn't. But he could have. Didn't. But he could have. But he didn't, Gil. <laughs> you threw him 12 million pop-ups in the backyard. You cut the odds considerably. If you hadn't, ow, ow. But there's three of them, and you want to have four. And the fourth one could be Larry. And they're going to do a lot of things. I mean, baseball's the least of it. And in all those things, sometimes they're going to miss. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes they will. Sometimes Sometimes they will. What do you want me to give you? Guarantees? These are kids, not appliances. Life is messy. Ugh, I hate messy. It's, it's, it's so messy. You know, when I was 19, Grandpa took me on a roller coaster. Oh? <laughs> up, <laughs> down, up, down. Oh, what a ride. What a great story. I always wanted to go again. You know, it was just interesting to me that a ride could make me so, so frightened, so scared, so sick, so, so excited, and, and so thrilled all together. Some didn't like it. They went on a merry-go-round. That just goes around. Nothing. I like the roller coaster. You get more out of it. <laughs> Grandma's wise. Grandma's wise. Guys, you, you have as your anchor the rock of Christ, which is going to hold you when you fall, when you fail, when you make mistakes. But doggone it. Take some risks. He's got you. He's 
got you at the end of the rope. Let's pray. Lord, thanks for these gentlemen here and also uh, via the technology that are watching. And we've had so many great speakers today, but Lord, we pray that uh, you'd help us to know that we're held firmly when we anchor our lives on you, the solid rock of Christ. Lord, help us to face that which we're afraid of and to step off the escalator, to move forward in life, uh, knowing that you hold us, you've got us, you've got our back, you've got our rope, we're anchored in you. Help us to be bold, godly men of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.